All right, we'll get started here. Uh, so Gorkum is going to be talking about developing Cordova applications with the Eclipse IDE. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Gorkum Arjan, and I actually work for Red Hat. Uh, today, I'm going to mostly do a, a demo of an Eclipse-based IDE that, that we use. Uh, we, we started um, shipping with our tools as part of our tools um, since, well, last summer, basically. Um, the, is everyone familiar with, with Apache Cordova here? Uh, you know what it does? It, it tries to wrap native APIs with JavaScript uh, so that you can build uh, applications. Where uh, the history of, because of the history of the, the Cordova project, uh, there is a mandatory phone gap explanation that needs to be done, basically. So basically, Cordova project started from PhoneGap, and it was contributed to the Apache Foundation as an open source project. And then um, right now, PhoneGap continues as a distribution of Cordova. And there's also a build service that is, um, that is available for building Cordova-based um, applications. Uh, so what Cordova tries to do or aims to do is to abstract away the native platform specifics so that you don't have to deal with them. You don't have to know different programming languages, API sets, API behaviors, and so on and so forth. And then use CSS, HTML, and JavaScript to develop your application. The problem with this one is the abstractions leak. And where do they leak? Actually, Cordova does a pretty good job with the API set. I mean, for the most of the time, the API set, you don't find many, many leaks coming in from the native platform. But when you are actually doing the development, and this is a screenshot of one of the example applications that, that Red Hat JBoss has. And it has been converted to a Cordova application. And can you, can you see the leaks here? We have an Android directory. It's an it's a HTML5 uh, application. It started as an HTML5 application. It has a J2E backend. But then we have an Android directory. And then inside that Android directory, you actually have full Android sources. And then on the iOS, directory, you basically have Objective-C code that wraps the, the whole thing into a native application. So that, that's where the leaks start. Uh, I'm going to, uh, this is not the latest state of the, the Ticket Monster example application. I'm going to show that as part of my demo, uh, what it had turned into. So when we started doing this, uh, tools using Eclipse IDE, the first thing that we, we had in mind is to hide the native development platform. We, we try not to show you Android, iOS, as much as we can. At, at some point, you need to see it, but that's like up to you if you want, if you want to see it. Uh, we try to make working with Apache Cordova easy. Well, we are, this is an IDE. Uh, so that's the goal. And then testing and debugging a bit less painful because we try to avoid using the native emulators as much as we can during your regular development cycle. And then when you're done with it, you can you know, go and use the emulators and device. Uh, so another thing that is interesting is where did all this come from? I mean, Red Hat is, is not exactly your Cordova company, right? Um, we have a project called AeroGear. And AeroGear project uh, actually covers more than tools. It also covers server-side bits, client-side APIs, and so on and so forth. For example, it does have a unified push notification server, uh, which basically uh, does Android and iOS push uh, also supports Firefox and simple push, uh, WebSocket-based push as well. We have a 
bunch of Cordova plugins as part of the, the uh, project, which provides one-time password generation and geofencing. And there are more uh, plugins that hasn't been released, but uh, under development as part of the AeroGear project. And as part of the, this effort, we thought that we needed an open source IDE to support our Cordova efforts. So that's why we started the project. So without further ado, I'll basically show how it works, how it looks. So basically when you want to, with any Eclipse project basically, you, well, the first thing you do is a, to create a project, right? So we have a project creation wizard, which is very basic. You basically type in the project name and then it generates a bunch of uh, IDs and names for your application. You can change the name and, and, and ID if you want to. And in the next page, it actually lets you select your Cordova version and the platforms as well. And if, if these platforms are not what you want to target, then you can actually go ahead and download another one. So, uh, including, well, this, this sub version actually supports RC releases as well, but you know, you can just select a RC release and, and, and also target that as well. And if you have your own Cordova distribution, you can also use that as well. We have a search button there which allows you to search your Cordova distribution on your desk and then start using that as a, as a Cordova engine. So let's generate the project. Uh, the generated project is quite simple. Uh, oh, apparently I had another project with the same name. Let's. Let me just generate this again with a different name. Okay, yeah. My plugins folder should be empty. So when you look at the, the directory structure that is generated by uh, the new project wizard, it's very similar to what Cordova CLI generates. Uh, it is missing a few directories and a few files because we don't need them on the IDE side. Uh, but other than that, it basically does the same thing. So the www directory, the www directory is where your source code is and it will be packed into your Cordova application. Uh, you have a config XML file uh, which you tell different aspects of the, of the, the application. Uh, like the, the uh, plugins that you use or the um, parameters that, that you have and so on and so forth. Uh, the merges directory works similar to Cordova CLI. So if you are building for Android, the, whatever you have on, under and Android directory will be merged into the www directory. So if you have a file with the same location under Android, it will actually overwrite the one on, on the merges as well, so that's, if you want to go into platform specific coding, then that's your, that's your way in. And we have the plugins directory as well, uh, which hosts the, the Cordova plugins that you, that you may or may not have. And once you create the project, basically you're ready to go. You can just run it on an iOS simulator, for instance. And what this will do is, behind the scenes, it, what it does is it actually generates an iOS Xcode project and compiles it and starts the iOS simulator. Uh, let me just switch to the simulator. This is uh, our basic uh, template. Uh, it's basically the same te template that uh, Apache project uses, but we just rebranded it. So, um, And, okay, so one thing that I want to show is once you create and run your application, let's go here, you can see that you can actually toggle different options on how you, how you want to run the application next time. For example, if you want to run a, a, rather than I, uh, 
um, iPad, right, rather than iPhone, you can actually select that, and next time it will be run on the uh, iPad simulator rather than, uh, rather than the iPhone simulator. And then, uh, I don't have that in my machine, but if you have more than one simulator installed on your, uh, um, on your, uh, on your computer, uh, you, you have the selection to select a different SDK as well. And this sort of options actually exist for Android as well. So if I run this on Android, uh, basically it generates a similar option set as well. So you can select which uh, target device that you want to use and so on and so forth. Right now the tools do not support running on, um, on an iOS device directly because well, we have frankly tr trouble with that because you know, uh, Apple is not very open with their APIs. But we do support running directly onto an Android device. If you have one plugged into your computer, it will just find it and, and, and send your application to it. Okay, next. Uh, let's move on to, Let me just quickly show that the config XML editor. If you are familiar with Eclipse multi-tab editors, it's a typical case of that. Uh, what it does is it actually lets you easily edit a few of the, the, the properties that you may have. It doesn't do so much validation uh, on the values that you put. It does check for correctness on the XML file, but then it doesn't really say that oh, you put a preference that doesn't make sense because, well, you cannot really do that sort of validation with config XML. We do some checks, but not, not too much. And it's an XML file. You can actually edit it with the regular Eclipse XML editor as well. Um, next, I'm going to show you about the plugins. So starting with Cordova 3.0, basically everything is a plugin other than the a few core pieces. Everything is a plugin. So if you want to use um, Accelerometer, that is a plugin. If you want to use GPS, that's a plugin now. So therefore, being able to have add plugins to your project is essential, very crucial. So therefore, we inst we created a, what we call a Cordova plugin discovery wizard. And what this wizard does is it actually goes to the Cordova registry and gets the list of plugins that you can install to your, app, to your, to your application. And it's a long list, as you can see. And then if you want to, well, let's go ahead and install one. I'm going to install the device plugin because that's like basic plugin that from Cordova project itself. And what it did is it actually went to the registry, downloaded the, the device plugin, and then uh, made, made the modifications to config files. So if we go back to the config XML, uh, we should see the, the, the device feature added to the config XML as well. And then, um, and basically waits for it to be generated. And if you want to see some of the details, well, we do have a properties view that we are extending nowadays, but if installing from registry is not enough for you, and you have your own plugin, for instance, uh, which is not part of the registry at that point, you can actually just point to a Git repository URL, and it will just fetch it and, and, and install it from there. Or you can just point it to a directory on your uh, file system, and it will do that as well. Um, so once I have that, let's start using this plugin. But before we do that, I, I mentioned that uh, we try to avoid using the, the emulator itself or the iOS emulator itself while we are developing. And there are good reasons for that. So for that, we actually have a Cordova simulator. 
and you can just run your application on the Cordova simulator. This is actually a, a combination of another Apache incubator project, Apache Ripple. So this console that generates the, the events is actually coming through the Apache Ripple. And what we have there is an embedded WebKit browser into a Java application. And this is fully scannable, so you can uh, change to uh, let me just for example, an iPhone 5 skin, and it will just you know adjust itself to the correct size and so on and so forth. And one thing that comes with this um, uh, with this, um, with the Cordova simulator, is we actually enable live reload, and what live reload does is when you make code changes on your project. Let's go back here. Ooh, that was too much. And and do a save. Uh, it basically just injects what you have made uh, changes into the DOM tree on, that is running on the Cordova simulator. So it's not a reload at that point. What it does is it actually picks up the changes and changes the DOM tree for you. And it actually works with uh, J JavaScript files and CSS files as well. So in order to do that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll show how the, uh, to show that how it works with the JavaScript files. I'm going to just add a title and go here, do a little bit of So now I'm going to use the, the Cordova uh, device uh, plugin to retrieve the Cordova version. And because I have the live reload enabled on the, on the Cordova simulator, it just goes and, and changes the, the file um, and runs it again. Uh, one thing that we are doing, if you are familiar with CLI, one thing that we are doing different compared to CLI is we are making it quite easy to uh, change your Cordova version. Uh, for instance, when you're running your application, you go to your properties and select 3.30, say okay, uh, I need to restart the Cordova simulator for this and then it will start just running the 3.3.0. So you don't, you don't need to make any other changes other than, oh, okay, I want to run on 3.3.0 or 3.2.0, and that's it. Um, another way to start a project is, other than um, starting with a new project, uh, another way of going with a new project is to import a new one, right? Remember the ticket monster that I had uh, here? We made some changes to it. After we started with our tools, and uh, we came to a, a, a sort of maturity, we decided that, okay, well, this was a wrong idea. We knew about it, so let's change the director structure completely. So what we did, let, let's have a look at it. Um, I'm blind. Oh, here. What we did is, 
this Ticket Monster is still a J2EE web application as well. Uh, but what we did is we, inside the Cordova directory, we basically have a link to DAO-DAO-DAO folder. And DAO-DAO-DAO folder is actually the J2E web application folder. So let's have a look at that. So this is actually a linked folder into here. And this is where all my files are. So if I want to use this in my tools, what I do is I will just go back to my IDE, say that I want to import a Cordova project. There. I did that before. So it detects that there is a Cordova project. And the way it does it, it actually looks for the config XML file and says, oh, OK, there is a config XML file. So this must be a Cordova project. And then looks into the directory structure and, and determines it's a, if it's a valid one. And then when I say finish, what it will do is it will just generate the, the project. And as you can see, my DAO-DAO-DAO folder is actually linked into the web app folder. On the, on the directory, so I can actually just use it at that point. And if I start the application, uh, let's do that on oh, no, IOS simulator. Uh, the application itself will not do much because it requires a J2E backend to run. Uh, I, print, I don't have that, but basically you can just import it and start running it at that point. Um, and if you want to actually use Cordova CLI to do that. You can do that as well. Um, let's create a Cordova project. So, I just created a project in under, under the a project to, to import directory. So I'm going to just import that into my IDE. So I have a bunch of other projects that are under the same directory. So it actually discovers all of them. Uh, there, there is one problem though, the, is because the Cordova CLI actually creates a copy of your DAO, DAO, DAO folder on their platform, it actually, for some of the projects, you will see that it's detected twice. But it doesn't matter. You, if, you want, if you know what you're doing, you will pro want to just import this one. But again, it's up to you. You may actually say that, oh, OK, I will just import this one as well. Uh, because the tool actually detects that they are the same, it will just disable the other, other option. So you won't be able to make any, any mistakes about it. So the project we created was named Hello Cordova, and it was under, under a project to import. So once we import that, we have the Hello Cordova, which we can run again on, well, let's run it on the iOS as well. Um, another, uh, while we were looking into um, how, how we develop uh, Cordova applications, we realized that most of our developers, our community actually, was using jQuery mobile to develop uh, their applications. So what we did for helping them out is to create a, some sort of a palette for them so that they can actually just drag and drop their jQuery mobile components into their HTML file and you know, uh, do some adjustments to it. Um, I'll just clear this and start with the page here. So this actually comes with a preview as well.
And you can actually see uh, as you type in or change the, the um, configuration of the component, you can directly see what, what's happening. And also, if, you, if you're familiar with, with jQuery mobile, if you change the theme, you can act also see that as well. So once I say finish, it will just add my compo uh, code into the, the file. Let's add a few more components. Um, let me add a set. Oh, a list view. Let's clear this. And once you're done, uh, you can actually just go ahead and run this um, on your, well. On your Cordova simulator, for instance. I'm guessing that Cordova simulator already picked up the changes, but yeah. Um, so this is, uh, jQuery mobile is the first palette that we have produced. Uh, we do plan to have more palettes in near future as well. Uh, Angular is very popular uh, nowadays. <laughs> Perhaps we can do something for that as well. Um, before I move on to my slides and show you a few things that are happening, I want to show the, okay, if you look at, well, one thing we, we, we did is we tried to keep it minimal uh, with, I mean, one problem with Eclipse is you have to, so many options that are happening. You need to configure a lot of stuff and so on and so forth. So we try to minimize that as much as we can. So one thing that you will see is you basically have a mandatory Android, Android SDK location uh, preference and also another preference for the engines that, that you have. And that's it. We may have more in the future, but you know, the, as, 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 as the goal, we are trying to keep it as minimum as possible. So, uh, of course, if a few words of caution needs to be uh, spent here. As you have seen that I, I created a Cordova CLI project and imported that into Eclipse. And that works. But if you start to modify your project using Eclipse, then you may actually have problems. For example, if you install a plugin with the Eclipse IDE, because we do not have all the artifacts that Cordova CLI has, it may or may not work depending on the plugin. So right now we are not guaranteeing 100% compatibility with Cordova CLI, uh, but that's one of the aims of the project. Uh, but you know, right now we are not there yet. It's, it's still work in progress. Let me find my slides. Okay, now let's talk about the project five or 10. Um, this is a new project proposal that we have put uh, under, uh, we have filed under Eclipse Foundation. It's basically putting most of what you have seen, I have demoed today. Uh, to Eclipse Foundation. So most of this code and these features is going to move into Eclipse Foundation. Uh, the proposal is still in, in, in place. Uh, we are expecting, if nothing goes wrong, meaning uh, no copyright challenges and so on and so forth, we are expecting by the end of this month a creation review for the project. Uh, but the project itself, 
is actually open source already. Uh, you can just fork it on uh, GitHub, as, as with most all of the JBoss stuff as well. And you can report a bug on JBoss org uh, Jira. And you can get the tools as part of the JBoss distribution on jboss.org slash tools. What I have demoed today was included everything that we have up to last night. So some of the features may or may not be on the, on the official distribution yet, but basically we are at beta two release for, for, for JBoss tools right now. And uh, the final release in, is in June and the June release will have this and a few more features uh, in it. And today we have a hackathon that is happening in the Mac courtroom. And we are giving away two Nexus 7 tablets. Uh, and we, by we, I mean IBM and Red Hat. Uh, there are a lot of Cordova committers in the room right now. Uh, and you have a very, very high chance of getting a Nexus 7. <laughs> Uh, there are two challenges that is happening as part of the hackathon. Uh, one is, is creating a hybrid mobile app, and the other one is actually making a Cordova contribution. So one of the Nexus 7s will be for the app, and the other one will be for the contribution. Um, so uh, step by, it's just right there. Uh, and if you have any questions, I can now have them. Uh, oh, we have something like 15 minutes for that. Yeah. Oh, I missed that part. <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> um, one thing that we actually have tied into the Cordova simulator, well, the Cordova simulator is great. It does a lot. Uh, you can actually debug your application with Firebug Lite. So it actually shows you the, the HTML stuff, CSS, uh, your, your DOM tree as well. Uh, it's not as rich as the Chrome DevTools, but we are actually tr trying to find a way to hook Chrome DevTools into our Cordova Sim as well, so that you can actually say, okay, I want to debug this now in, on, on Chrome DevTools or uh, something like that. We also do support Winery uh, as a debugging option, but this one involves servers to push the stuff back and forth. It's good if you are debugging on a device, uh, it may help, uh, but if you're doing it locally with the Cordova simulator itself, uh, then I would suggest using the Firebug Lite. Another option that we are looking into is to be able to uh, hook our live reload to a real server, a real device that is that you are running your application, and also hook the debugging uh, while doing that as well. So those are you know uh, those are areas that we we would like to continue to grow on. But right now, what we have is is Firebug Lite, and it does a lot of useful things. Um, also, I forgot to mention, uh, you can see that there are two Cordova SIM instances running here because I started the Cordova SIM from the run as menu twice, and that's intentional. It's not a bug. Uh, people familiar with, with Eclipse actually uh, say that, okay, it shouldn't be running a new instance. That's intentional because what we want to be able to do is actually test your application in two resolutions or two skins at the same time. So once you're doing that, and let's start adding, ch making changes. You can see the changes happening in real time on both uh, both instances of the of the uh, Cordova simulator. Uh, this one didn't change. Probably it's because 
uh, Larry Reload is not really enabled. It just thinks that it's enabled. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, such as yeah okay at that point we are running into the limits of Eclipse and by limits of Eclipse well I'm not sure if you are familiar with Eclipse itself but what we are using as the the JavaScript editor um, here is coming from an Eclipse project called JavaScript Development Tools, JSDT. And the JSDT project uh, is not very well uh, resourced right now. And it does have problems with uh, JavaScript. It's not doing as good as a job it should do uh, as Java. So we are looking into alternates for enhancing JSDT. Uh, actually, uh, together with the Orion project on e Eclipse and how we can enhance that. Uh, in the meanwhile, what we have done as a stopgap solution is uh, we are working on is under these JavaScript resources, you will see the Cordova JS library. And what we are trying to do is to be able to put the whole Cordova JS library in as a and, and basically just build that into our tool so this will give you a fairly good uh, code assist for the Cordova stuff itself but it will fail short when you're using plugins uh, because you can I think there is like 200 plugins right now and we have no way of building all that information into the Eclipse itself uh, and JST needs to, to work and parse those files correctly so that we can provide code, code assist, which is not happening right now, but it's something that we are trying to enhance. So yeah, that way we are aware of the, of the problem. We're just, you know, it, it is just going to take a bit longer time to fix it with the current JavaScript editor. Sure, sure. Uh, you just need to say that I'm going to open my HTML uh, files with that okay. editor. Uh, basically, uh, it, so right now, when you open this, you, you see that it's actually using a JBoss Tools HTML editor, which is a bit enhanced version of the standard Eclipse uh, HTML editor. And the reason for the enhancements is basically to be, to be able to accommodate the palette uh, that you see. But uh, it could be up as as uh, editor as well, uh, which is doing much, much better than the, the basic HTML editor that Eclipse has. Yeah. I guess everyone is hungry. <laughs> so yes, is uh, it's already under EPL. It's already under EPL. Uh, there are a few libraries that are under MIT, uh, but those are third-party libraries that we use. Yeah. Yeah. So if you download actually, there are two ways to install it. Um, The current version, you, there are two ways to install it. Uh, the first one is you can go to the jboss.org tool, slash tools and then get the, the installer version. Uh, it will give you an installer and it will install the jboss tools. Uh, and the other way is to go to the Eclipse marketplace and search for jboss tools and it will install the jboss tools to whatever Eclipse that you have uh, on top of it. So, 
And it's part of JBoss tools. And if you want to get the latest and the greatest one, uh, I think there is, well, if this page opens up, there is an up, uh, update site that lists where you can get the latest development milestones as well. It's all under jboss.org slash tools. How you get the tools is there. Yeah, sure. Uh, if you want to build for Android, you need the Android SDK installed. That's the good thing. You don't. You need the SDK, but you don't need the Android develop, development tools on Eclipse. So you just need the SDK to be present, and you just need to tell the hybrid mobile tools where it is. That's it. And if you want to use ADT, you can still use it as part of your Eclipse, but we don't require it. Because it's, yeah, well, <laughs> because it's ADT. <laughs> Yeah, well, this page looks well, better when it's loaded, but um, you can actually get the development milestones from here. Uh, right now, it's listing for 2.0 Alpha 2, and Beta 1 is about to be released to this site as well. Uh, the way it goes with JBoss, we do generate the Beta uh, a milestone release, and then uh, JBoss, Red Hat, people test it, you can still get it uh, from the Nike builds. And then it's declared as a milestone once the tests are completed. Yeah. So right now they're testing it. Any other questions? Thank you.